Okay, so here we are with part two of our putting a journal together and you can see where I've got to um, with regard to the cover. Um, I did my ruffle and I found, as I told you, I found this sari silk and I've put all that together. I put it together in one layer, so I had this lace. I made my ruffle by sitting at the sewing machine um, and literally just doing that, putting the sewing machine foot down and as I fed it through just with straight stitch um, I folded it as I went like that, stitched along with a straight stitch um, and then I measured it against half the book, took a section of this and pinned all this together so I had three layers. I had this bottom lace, the ruffle and the sari trim all pinned together. The vintage lace goes all the way around the back um, but this I trimmed just to half the width and once it was pinned together I took it back to the sewing machine and did a zigzag along there to attach it all to one piece. Then I opened my book, glued it down with Fabri-Tac I glued the middle first and then went back and went under here with a very delicate touch. Then I stuck down my picture. I did unfortunately manage to get a little bit of glue on here but I'm definitely not doing it again. And then I decided that some lace down the spine would be nice. Um, so this is just a double width um, it's this but it's in a double width I've cut it in half there for this I left it as one piece um, put my book like this thin bead of glue along the spine stuck the spine down and then went back um, folded it back on itself and put some glue behind the roses here and behind the edges and glued it carefully and again I used a very light hand with the Fabri-Tac glue um, one of the things I meant to say last time was that I like to decorate my pages once they're sewn into the book, which can create issues. I've done it both ways, but I like to see the book come together as a whole thing. Um, so I usually get around it somehow or other. <laughs> anyway, you'll see as we go. So what we're going to do today is make the pocket for this page, but first of all, I want to stencil um, something on this white scrapbook paper. So I've got my favourite stencil, which I think, um, oh, I don't know where that came from. It's probably a crafter's, um, is it a crafter's workshop? I'll look it up for you. Anyway, um, I'm using dye ink called Cotton Candy from Simon Says Stamp and I'm just going to dab that on with a Tim Holtz. I have masked over the little sprays that you can see. And this will be um, a motif that I'll repeat through through the book. I don't want that. If I can help it, although it's not the end of the world if it gets on there a little bit. And that's probably enough. bit done. That lives up there. Uh, I practiced there. <laughs> and then I've cut, um, I had some paper from this tea time collection, a little bit left. So this is going to be my pocket and I've cut it to eight and a quarter which is the height of my book page by two and a half. And for this journal I'm going to punch the edge with this lace punch is an EK success and is one of my favourites so let's 
see how we get on with this at this peculiar angle I'm working at. That often happens, you miss out a bit. But we'll go back and sort that out in a minute. Really only punch is a very short section each time. A couple more. That one and then we'll go back to this one. So hopefully I can do this by lining it up both sides. Okay. Oh. Sorry to bump you again. Oh. And although I don't ink the edges of my book pages, I do like to ink the edges of anything I add. I don't know why. <laughs> I just feel it looks better, particularly on this leading edge here where we're changing, where we change from one paper to another. So that's that. And I'm going to glue this in on the three sides. So you can see that that looks quite pretty. And I'll use tacky glue for this. Sorry, I would normally do that a little bit neater. <laughs> I've just got my arms around the tripod make things a bit tricky. I did think about stitching this before I glued it in which is how I would sort of fake you know I said I like to do my pages once they're in the book. Um, obviously stitching something can be quite tricky. I have done it I have put a whole book through the sewing machine depending on which page it is and what I want to achieve but in this case, what I would have done is stitched around the pocket on the three sides and then just glued it in. And then it would look as though it was stitched in and you would still have smooth on this side, which I quite like. I don't always like the underside of the stitching. Again, it depends on the effect I'm looking for. And now I want to put something in this pocket and I've chosen a vintage book page from an 1876, um, I think it's 76 or maybe 96 book and I've, it's the Dictionary of Gardening and I've chosen the page with Rosa on it. Um, this book is going to be called Rose or Rosa, maybe Rosa <laughs> and it just seemed appropriate. So this page measures 10 inches and obviously it fits into the pocket so I folded it in half and in half again and as luck would have it we got Rosa here. Um, you could just pop that in and that would be fine that would look good and it would pop out here but I'd like to add a bit more to that so I'm going to put a belly band around it. So I've cut a piece of card or card scrapbook paper really two and a half inches um, and folded it at just a tad over two and a half. Um, and I'm going to glue these two bits together. Again, this is the sort of thing that I would like inked. And I'm going to do those bits as well. And for this one I decided that um, I would put the larger flap over the smaller one. Not sure why, it just seemed to look better. Tried it both ways. Okay, so that's that. And that should slot into there. Okay, so now we've got a pretty little belly band. And I thought for a little bit of further embellishment, so it's a 
a little bit of a surprise when you pull it out of the pocket. I'm going to glue a little bit of lace, literally a scrap. This is my um, my old bottle, so you might have to bear with me a moment. Came out a bit quick. Let's glue that on there. A little bit of the sari silk that I've used on the front. And I'm just going to put a couple of little, um, little bit of bling on there. My glue is oozing out all over the place. Fabric tack is awful at the end of the bottle. Anyway, we can glue that on there. So that makes a pretty little embellishment. I'm going to pop that in the pocket. The pink is pretty up here. All tones together and we've done our first decorated page. Um, I've got three minutes left on this um, video so I'm just going to show you what I've decided to do I thought we'd try and do or I'd try and do similar things I haven't decorated this I think it's going to have one of these on but I haven't decided so in this case I'm obviously not going to cover the bird up anyway but I'm going to do a pocket I've chosen this green because again it tones in I'm going to put punch the edge this time with this Fiskars punch because I want it less pretty. I've chosen a book page, um, similar size with a bird on and some nice bits. This is a book called from called from under the from the undercliff um, that I'm sure you've seen Izzy B use. Um, in her gorgeous journals. This is going to have a music paper belly band and to decorate this I wanted, I really really wanted to use this paper because I just thought it fitted in, the colour colours fitted beautifully but I couldn't really, I suppose we could make it work but I didn't like this girl. Anyway, I might, oh, I might go back to that but what I did do was cut a smaller piece of paper and turn it into a flag. I will ink all the edges and I'm going to put um, part of a die cut. I'm going to cut this die cut branch down, glue that on and somewhere here I've got two tiny little birds and I'm going to sit them on the branches. So that's how that's going to look. I'll finish that off and show you at the beginning of the next video when we'll move on to something to fit into the paper bag here. Thank you for watching. See you all soon. Bye.